you're tuning in and maybe watching this live stream or or maybe you see this on YouTube somewhere uh, these are not messages on how to get saved how to get a man how to get a woman how to get a house how to get a car all of that is great but we're kind of like beyond that yeah. where the Bible says let us go on into perfection and yes we continue to preach on prosperity and all of these wonderful things too here but we are here to raise the vibratory frequency of the body of Christ and grow us up into him in all things. Hallelujah. Because we are preparing to shape the world. We are preparing to change the world. And you need the wisdom and knowledge of God in order to be able to do these things. My people are destroyed for the lack of what? Because they rejected it. It is not because knowledge was not available, but because of many of God's people seem to reject knowledge that are outside of the four principles, spiritual principles they call it, or the basics of salvation. They seem to want to not to think. Don't make me think. Just give me what I've heard a thousand times and every Sunday that I go to church, give me the same stuff all over again. Don't force me to think outside my box that I put God in, but we are here to force you. Amen. If you're in this house, you're going to be forced to think. Hallelujah. You're going to be forced to think the thoughts of God. Somebody say amen in here. Amen. Am I in the right house? <laughs> because you are people here that are hungry for more of God. You're not satisfied with where you are in your experience. You thank God for, but you want more. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will not be like the ancient Hebrew people that pitched their tents in the wilderness and said, okay, I'm tired now. I'm going to just stay here, but you're going to follow the cloud. What happened to those that pitched their tent in the wilderness and decided to stay there and not follow the glory cloud? The serpents and the scorpions came out and destroyed them. And that's what's happening to much of religion today because they have pitched their tent. Well, I got this doctrine. I got this understanding and I got it. I'm going to stay right here with it. And so the serpent of humanism and human wisdom and stuff comes out and it destroys you and there's no glory there. But we are following the cloud. We're following the cloud wherever he leads us to. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now in this parable, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> give me <coughs> one second. <coughs> I was yelling so loud this morning doing praise and worship. I'm surprised I still got a voice. <laughs> okay, so uh, this parable here is a very powerful parable of Jesus. And uh, I want to just under open up some of the parabolic language for you to help you to understand. And so um, follow along with me. I will not be dealing with the basic uh, version or explanation of this parable that we've heard a hundred times. Okay, I'm going to go into more so metaphysic and esoteric understanding of this parable because it is there. Now, esoteric is still a bad word in most of the church, Pastor. And I remember when I used to go in it like years or so ago and stuff over a decade ago, and I would use the word esoteric. And Pastor would come to me and say, Well, brother, you're sounding a little bit new agey there, you know. Why do you have to use esoteric? And I would try to dress up my words and stuff. And, uh, but, you know, it is something about as you develop your language develop. Yes. Yes. If you are 10 years old and you're still talking like a one year old, something's wrong. Yes. Yes. Amen. If you're 20 years old and you're still talking like you're in grade three or four, how tremendous everything is, something is wrong. <laughs> Some of you got that. <laughs> So spiritually speaking, spiritually speaking, if you're still using the same language that you were using when you first came to God uh, and stuff, and that hasn't changed in it, it shows your level of spiritual maturity. That's not a condemnation or anything like that. It's just showing that you need to expand your, spir your spiritual vocabulary. And in order to expand your spiritual vocabulary, you've got to get some new input. 
Hey, glory to God. You got to have a new download of the spirit. Now, uh, pastor was speaking something. I keep re uh, referring to it because this is where I was this morning about voice activated kingdom that you live in. We are in a voice activated kingdom. God uses the technology of voice of what you say to activate everything in the spirit realm, the things that you see and that you cannot see. And if you don't know the words of how to use or what to use, you will not have gain access to that to what you are seeking or desiring okay now I'll give you just another little example here in my long explanation of why of, of esoteric and stuff like that is uh, for example when the Holy Spirit was poured out in this country back in the early 1900s all at once there was a change in the language in the church you start hearing phrases about being filled with the Holy Ghost the power of the Holy Spirit being slain in the spirit. Those became trigger words in the spirit that activated something within the minds of those that heard it to expect, to receive. We started hearing about miracles, supernatural healing. So now we're hearing about some other things. And to just to go back for one moment to night one when I dealt with the cell in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas was in that inner cell, the word for inner there, if you look it up in the Strong's Concordance, the, the Greek is esoteros. So if somebody say that's not in the Bible, now I can tell them esoteric is in the Bible. <laughs> you just have to learn some Greek. <laughs> And so, and so when Paul was placed into the inner cell, the Greek word that is used there is esoteros, where we get the word esoteric from, which only means that which is secret, that which is hidden, only for those that desire to know the truth and really, really want to understand it is revealed to. You have to have a desire to know. 